Hey everyone, Siri here, and welcome back to another week of Astro Season Offense matches. This week saw a bit of a split focus in teams. Dimitri's not one to let Edelgard hold the spotlight for long, and he even got to share the stage with a bonus week Ascended Lagern. Dimitri himself is still an extremely powerful tank, thanks to the combination of slaying effect, dodge, and atrocities, true damage, and smoke spectrum. Panic Smoke really helps round out his kit, and lets him shut down the various menace skills and other visible debuffs used on defense teams. Using Thor on his team also lets him use Soul instead of Noontime, giving Dimitri access to some extremely powerful self-healing. I also replaced Thor's weapon, using a Love Candelabra and an extra drive attack, to make her a highly effective two-space support mythic. While Brave Lucina still has an edge over Thor in combat stat bonuses, being able to use a mythic for a similar effect can really open up team building options, and the extra visible stats from the mythic bonus are always useful. Thor's breath effect is also multi-phase, and works for every weapon type, which lets her be a very effective support for a bonus week Lakeyarn. While this team's focus is mostly on Dimitri, Lakeyarn is a powerful player phase threat in her own right, and her native trace gives her a lot of options for navigating the map. Being able to punch through follow-up denial is a strong effect for a ranged cavalry to have built into their kit, and her weapon provides her with some extreme bonuses to stats in combat. Dimitri had an alternative team to work with this week as well, which also gave Lakeyarn a chance to team up with Fjorm. This team lets Dimitri use a melee-focused set, replacing Thor's Worldbreaker with a Steady Breath seal and using Attack Speed Solo for his ace slot. Fjorm complements him really well, covering Dimitri and the rest of the team from ranged threats. Between her special-based damage reduction, Nulsi Disrupt, and self-healing, she can shrug off most of the usual counters to far-safe armors. Edelgard got plenty of time to shine too. While she didn't have Ash to make things totally degenerate this week, she's still more than capable of gale-forcing teams herself, especially with bonus week stats. Combining Heavy Blade and Quickened Pulse with Raging Storm makes it really easy for her to secure three actions in a turn by herself, allowing her to neutralize key targets. Pairing her with Yuri gives her a lot of options for navigating maps, and really helps her get onto teams using traps to prevent Gale Force strategies. Harmonic Dorothy is a great second dancer for the team, since her extra dance works for both Edelgard and Yuri, and the spectrum of chills she offers can help punch through any particularly annoying targets. The mythics supporting the teams are mostly the same across the board, using Naga to soak dark shrines while Ashura soaks bright ones. Ashura also offers the team a full spectrum of buffs, and panic immunity, while Plumeria's dense support and mobility options never stop being useful. Now that we've gone over the teams, let's get to the first match. This match will be a bit of a different start to the week, with a fully walled-in save stall wall setup. Having two far save units overlapping like this is a little awkward, since it does mean you can actually just move in and attack either Gustav or Cerros without worrying about either of the save armors getting in the way, since they don't actually function when they overlap like this. We also have a corner fallen Edelgard, and a close counter plus 10 Alphonse. It's pretty impressive, honestly. It's a solid unit along with a Seros and a bonus week Mirabilis to bolster their stats. I don't think I'm going to really have too many issues with this, it should be relatively straightforward to clear this. I'm going to start things off by letting Edelgard open this up. For us. Close your Actually, eyes. Let Dimitri get in there on the next turn. Yes. And start cleaning things up a little bit. By your we'll will. just move Thor up and what is your desire? Over. And wait a turn. Mm -hmm. Then from here, yes. we're just going to move Dimitri forward. Oh. I'll do it. And move him up here to tank his way through their team. I seek a foe. We'll move Thor behind him to give him a nice set of combat benefits. What are you thinking? My Laker moves over to break this bright shrine. And then stays down here. It will the be next done. turn. Move I am Asher and Naga over and say go. Oh. 
Claire moves in first. She doesn't lose as much health as Goose Dog here. Don't let them retreat. But it is funny to see her attack before him. He moves in next, and well, he does have a solid amount of damage reduction on the first hit. It's not enough to punch through to me, true. Or stop him from knocking Goose Dog out in one round. Zeros can also get a little bit of damage done. But Dragon Effectiveness means that the is not, not going to worry about this. Then Henriette moves in and meets a pretty similar fate. We will not lose! And here, we'll just move to the river and open things up a little. Your orders. And then have Dimitri actually one-shot this feeling. Yes. And we're just going to smite for one tile. What is your desire? Flip the Marriott over. Close which your lets eyes. your aerobatics forward. Yes. And give Dimitri a way to bait and knock out Alphonse this turn. Let's hatch a plan. And we also let the Yarn move forward and get ready to handle their fallen needle burn. Yep. Alphonse can do pretty significant amount of damage before the damage reduction kicks him. We will not lose. And then Dimitri just heals for 38 points anyway. What are you and thinking? We're going to let this and we play here and have some of the fun. I'll comply. We'll break the first pot, and then we'll I have a flower foe. flip her over here. Why not? Dance her with Plumeria. Yes. And let her absolutely dumpster the Sadal card. <laughs> She'll even get to bonfire through this, since... Disgrace leaves a brand. Or it lets her punch through that special fighter effect. That's a fun way to start the week. Let's see what we get next. This match should be another interesting one, with Edelgard taking her opponent's week back from Dimitri. They've got a pretty impressive legendary Krom in the front here. When he's in season, he can be very bulky, and his new invisible attack is not a joke. Courtesy of the attack bonuses from the Seros and the Yuno. They also have a Mirabilis to add some extra stats, and a third Dancer to their roster, including an in-season Azura, and a duo Seeker. And rounding out the team is this duo Corin. Phantom Speed's an interesting choice for her. It helps boost the chances that she gets the true damage with the max from her weapon, but I think Blade Session might just be a better overall seal for her, since the plus three attack she gets from it can do a lot more than potentially a couple of points of true damage. We should be able to clear this out pretty cleanly, I think. It'll just take a turn to move everyone into position and get ready to start things up. I'm going to I let Yuri test this trap and open up this cauldron. It's the real one, that's good. I am the answer. And then move Ashura down and we're just knock it over. And away. I'm move Dorothea here without breaking this so that Rom can't actually reach us from Why this not? position, and we'll move Plumeria over too. And say go. Doing this means that we get to keep Edelgard's stride online. And even though our safety fence does get broken, that they don't have a fence trap that actually pushes their threat range forward, so it doesn't matter. Yes. And from here, we should just be able to clean up most of the map pretty easily. Where to, friend? We're going to foul play Edelgard forward, and have Yuri move over this way. Close we're going to let Plumeria dance Yuri, and he can this open will be up fun. this field for us. Your we're plan. going to have Edelgard start by knocking out Seekford. That actually does take her two heads, thanks to the Frankel disadvantage, but she's got enough speed to manage that. Understood. And she'll move over here and actually break this panic matter instead of attacking the second time right away. Let's here, Dorothea can dance her. 
Time to go. Well, then she can knock out Azura. The freeze in that second gale force to Your plan. move forward, lock Corrin in place, and take down Crawl. Huh. And here, both Duma and Seros can only actually reach Edelgard. Mirabilis can't reach anybody, and she should be able to knock out both Seros and Duma without any issues. Yes. So we're just gonna say go. Yep. Duma moves in. That's a right one swing, but the auto follow-up from Raging Swarm means that she's always going to double back, even though he does have a way to prevent that and turn it into a speed tie. She's more than fast enough to match that. And can do it to Cerros too. Who isn't actually so frightened this first hit anyway. And Plumeria can't get anything done. Oh, it's Mirabilis, not Plumeria. <laughs> and then from here, all we want to do is make sure we pick up these pots before I close things out. Or it's not really hard for you to hurt one shot here. There is but one Plumeria future. Power. I won't disappoint. Let Gary pick up the first pot. Move him over here. Which will let Dorothea jump over him and pick up the second ether pot. Your plan. And we'll just have Edelgard move over. Oh, I'll do it. Understood. And take down Mirabilis to close up the match. Huh. That was a fun one. Neat mix of Gale Force and enemy phase in the same go. Let's see what we get next. This match will be a fun one. They've mostly got an in-season bonus week legendary theme with this legendary Edelgard, who, as we're also using her as in her bonus week, along with a bonus week in-season Fjorm. They're both really bulky, and Fjorm's remix can make her pretty deceptively hard to knock out. And they have a legendary Lolina, who's also in-season as one of their major threats. One with a Kronya on a defense, who's not someone I've seen very much on defenses at all. I do think she's a lot better off in player hands, so that you can take full advantage of her vantage effect. But pairing her with a Duma with the upheaval damage is a really neat way to try and make sure that she'll always get to use that vantage. At least outside of healing tower bonus weeks. They also have a bonus week Mirabilis and a Ceres to round out their team, and bulk up Hadelgard and Fjorm a little bit more. I don't think we're really going to have problems with this match, it should be fairly straightforward. We should be able to get things going on the second turn without any difficulty. There we go. Needed to remind myself how I wanted to start this. It will be done. We're going to just take a turn to open things up a little. This will be fun. We'll test both of these bolt traps. Understood. Oh, I'll do it. Well, we move forward and them. get ready to start things off. I won't and instead of actually breaking the Stark Shrine, we'll let Yuri just stay in place here, since breaking it would actually let Lena reach this tile. And I'd like to Time let to Legendary Edelgard get her stride online for next turn. We stay out of range, so there's not much they get to do here, and the Healing Tower undoes a lot of Duma's work. I am the we'll answer. just smite Edelgard forward and complete her buff spectrum, Time to go. which should let her just easily handle herself. Since the other Edelgard does not actually get her solo skills online and can't prevent this follow-up. From there, Understood. she can just march over and knock out Kronya, and actually gets to double Kronya as well, which is funny. And Your then plan. move back over and knock out Lolina. And from here she should be able to enemy phase the rest of their team that isn't boxed in, and Duma has no way to get out of his corner. 
That's so we're fun. just going to break the structuring. Get Kanto down here. Why not? Which will let Blue Maria jump up and break the Seether pot for us. And, away. and then we'll just dance here. What is your desire? Where do and move him over this way to get ready for next turn. And then we'll say go. Sarah moves in first. She has the least amount of health to lose, so... It's a pretty one-sided combat, though. The defense tile just makes it a little more one-sided than it should be. Mira can't actually survive this either. Kato's just got a little too much attack, and that sure damage from Heavy Blade is helping out with that, too. And Fjorm just barely gets one-shotted here. And from here it should be pretty simple to close things out. We're just going to flip Yuri forward, be fun. let him break the second ether pot for us, move him down, close your eyes. then we can dance him, I won't disappoint. let him foul play Edelgard forward, Time to go. and we'll let her close out the match. Huh. And down goes Duma. It's a pretty clean match. See what we get next. This match is going to be another interesting one. Yeah, they've got a very surprisingly annoying team to handle with this Hardy Fighter Hector in the front line. This is, I think, the first Hardy Fighter Hector I've run into on an AR team, and He's very hard to break with ranged attacks, thanks to a 75% damage reduction from Aegis, and a steady breath to let him fully recharge it for every swing. They also have this Harmonic Leaf, who's also pretty annoying to handle, thanks to Guard and his Miracle effect. And they back that up with a Wings of Mercy Anoka and Dorothea. The Duo Sigurd helps enable their Dance Trap, on turn 1 or 2, depending on safety fences, and the bonus week Mirabilis with Wings of Mercy helps to complete their Wings of Mercy follow-ups by adding a third dancer to their list. Part of why this was so annoying is just because of how bulky this odor is and how hard he can swing if you actually let him attack with his menace active, while also making sure that Inoka and Leaf can't reach your backline and making sure that you also don't end the match immediately. I think, though, that I ended up almost just overthinking this, and we should be able to close things out pretty easily. And just by moving Dimitri in and sniping on her immediately. Your order. There's a chance that I've miscalculated, though, so hopefully not. We'll see. Why not? I'm just going to dense Dimitri, which debuffs Odor's defense a little. There is but one future. And smite him forward with Ashra. Which tests the trap for us, and it's real. I did expect this, it makes it a lot harder to start gale forcing this or handle them with melee. I'll comply. And then Dimitri should be able to just barely one shot odor. While we won't be able to put Thor in range of him to enable the soul combo, mostly thanks to this leaf and his attack range. He should still be able to handle this enemy phase. At least I'm hoping. By your will. We're just going to have him go break this throne. They will flip her back to complete Thor spectrum of buffs. Yes. And break this bolt tower so we don't have to worry about it. And see how this goes. Oh, okay, so Leaf's actually rallying instead of attacking immediately, which is fine. Dimitri doesn't actually one-shot Hector, which is also important, since we don't want to end the match here. And then Leaf rallies again, gets danced again, and now Hinoka can finally attack us. She can do a solid amount of damage, but it's not enough to avoid getting one-shotted on the counter, and it also doesn't really threaten Dimitri. Leaf rallies one last time, and then Sigurd moves in, and... Well, just gives us a nice, solid heal for his trouble. 
Don't let them retreat. That's a pretty successful approach. It's good to see. And here, the most important part of the match is just to secure these ether pods before we close things out. And that shouldn't be too hard to do. Yes. We're just going to move Dimitri back. Oh, dense I'll do it. Before yes. smiting him back up here. Draw him all the way past Hector and take care of Leaf before he rallies his way into any nonsense. And with no more assists on their team, we don't have to worry about anything except the dancers attacking directly into Dimitri. Let's and we'll just break the structure. I seek a foe. And start yes. moving back over so that we can watch these fireworks. Pick up the pots, hopefully next turn. Dorothea attacks first. We don't get to heal here, but that's okay. She's not really doing much to Dimitri. And Mira should just heal him all the way back to full health. Don't let them retreat. Nice and clean. Hector's back to full health too, but that's okay. Oh, here, we can just let Dimitri pick up this pot, what are you and thinking? then let Lakeron break this and move forward, oh, giving I'll Plumerian an opening to sweep the second pot while staying safe from Hector since he can't reach her through this catapult. I and we'll just the move answer. Asher up here, it will be done. and flip Thor over, By your will. and wait one more turn. From here, I actually just want future. to experiment and see if we can actually have Lakeron kill this Hector. They will submit. Now that he doesn't have his Aegis available for this first hit, Let's and we have a fully buffed Lakeron. Yep. Bonfire is going to be just enough. Disgrace leaves a brand. And there's the Aegis. But down he goes. That's a fun match. Let's see what we get next. This match will be an interesting one. They have a pretty neat layout here with a few ranged cavalry and an odor, giving them a lot of threat range on this map, with Leaf covering a lot of the available area on his own, while the bonus weak lake yarn actually provides a lot of threat if you're not being careful and try to ignore her and let her get online. They also have a Fjorm on this front line, who's helping protect her team with far save, and makes it a little harder to just hit and run against Olivia or Leaf or Lightgarn. While the rally from Odor, and potential dances afterwards from Olivia, really helps to surprise anyone who's just trying to bait Leaf out. They also have this Lara Shell, there's a good way to shut down tanking strategies involving this defense tile if you try to just wall everything in by sitting on it. And a Duma in the corner for an extra mythic and possibly sniping an important structure with upheaval. It's a neat team overall. They do have a pretty significant problem here though with this Olivia and boxing their team in like this, since if you end up planting any non mulsi disrupt unit that just won't be able to counterattack Olivia here, you can actually lock all four of these units in place without them being able to do anything. And that's actually how we're planning to approach this. I'm going to take this first turn just to clear up a couple of things and move into place. Where to, we'll friend? have Yuri break this tactic room to make sure he doesn't get himself glued for the next turn. Yes. is just going to move down here, and we'll have Ashra break this. Then dance her them. and move her down so yes. Edelgard can get her stride online. Oh, I'll then Plumeria is going to break this hot spring. And we'll say go. Nothing will happen this first turn since well, we're all out of range, thanks to the safety fence. And there's no actual dance trap here since Olivia can't quite reach Fjorm. I won't From here, we're going to swap Betelgard forward, and have Yuri test another trap in the meantime. 
Then we have Edelgard march forward and one shot leave for a pretty easy guild force. Then we're going yes. to have Ashra's smite Plumeria forward thanks to guidance from Dorothea and reposition Dorothea forward as well. And this should be just enough to let Edelgard one-shot Fjorm. She doesn't actually get to Gale Force here, but that's not a bad thing. Since it means that we'll be able to Gale Force through Lakeyard instead. Who is just a little too bulky for Edelgard to one-shot. Understood. And with this corner cleared, we can just dance the card, move her over one tile, and give Olivia a stay of execution, which should lock their entire team behind a wall of their own making. Since Edelgard can't counterattack Olivia, and she ends up just dancing Odor anyway. From here, it's just about clearing these units out one at a time while we make sure we pick up these ether pots before the end of the match. I don't Understood. think it'll be too difficult. We should actually be able to get this done Why not? in this turn. I'm going to dance Edelgard first to clear off these menace debuffs, Your plan. which lets her carve through Olivia without any problems. Before moving on to also one-shot Odor. That's a little important since an effective damage Luna is not something that Edelgard would like to tank. Giving the Slaying Hammer is a fun idea. And from here, we're going to smite Yuri forward. Let him knock out this Bolt Tower so it doesn't hit Edelgard this next turn. Move down a tile, which should let Dorothea Dew dance him. I won't I'm going to let him pick up the first ether pot. And Dorothea away. can pick up the second one. And Your Edelgard plan. can close this out by finishing off Lara Shaw. Huh. And then she can enemy phase Duma without any problems. Without a weapon online, he's really not going to be able to do much to her, and well. She can one-shot him pretty handily. And down he goes. That was a fun clear. Let's see what we get next. This match is going to be an interesting one. It's been a little while since I saw a map line that's dedicated to that strategy. And I think they can still be pretty spooky when they're set up correctly. This one has some neat tricks, including a wind sweep and phantom speed seeker, which is a good way to try and help get past any parse farmers that aren't fast enough to beat that speed check, especially with this ARD skill. And the rally trap here with Thracier and Mirabilis, who's at ground orders, can also catch people off guard by forcing you to tank a Thracier, along with potentially the red that you're trying to beat with a blue unit. We also have this Harmonic Leaf, who's potentially frustrating to handle, since the Miracle Effect can be a little difficult to get around if you don't have someone who hits hard enough on that first counter. And then they've got a Ceres in the corner with Chill Speed and some Wings of Light for Thracier to do a little more should actually be able to get things started on the first turn here, as long as we plan this out correctly. I hope I have. I'm going to Yours. let Dimitri open this up for us. And have Lagar move up front to try and break this tactic room ahead of the next turn. That's a real trap, it's fine. Yes. Jorm's going to jump over this way and swap Dimitri to keep Lagar safe oh, on this next I'll turn. Then we'll have Plumeria dance like you Yes. And actually break this tactic room. We're not going to Kento anywhere here. She's fine where she is. I am we'll the just answer. have Asher move over one pile to avoid getting sniped by Leaf. Yes. And Snogu can break this throne. 
Well, here, there should be a couple of rallies from this Thrace here, since she can't actually do damage to Fjorm, so she's just going to rally a couple of times before everyone else moves in. Anna's not going to be able to do damage here. Even with the pain, she can't outheal Fjorm's post-combat healer. And that means there's not much she can do. Except some splash damage to everybody else. Seeker isn't really getting much done here either. The speed res skill and wind sweep combo, while it can work against something like a Hector, doesn't do him any favors here against Fjorm. What are you here, thinking? we should be able to just continue letting Lager do some work. Huh. With Fjorm backing her up. We'll start by sm sniping Mirabilis and then move here. Close your and then eyes. Then Mario can dance her. Let's have She'll to move plan. over here and one shot Leaf. Who doesn't get a miracle against other archers? To protect my friends. Then we can move Fjorn forward to protect them both from the duo leaf. Then oh, we'll have to make sure we move over here. We're not going to move further up so that Lagern can get her rouse skill online for next turn. Yes. We'll move Ashra this way. What is your desire? And we'll move up a tile as well. Another rally happens, Leaf moves up, and attacks into Fjorn. He can do a chunk of damage before the ice mirrors kick in. But it's not enough for him to really threaten her. Yeah! Even though he does actually get to survive this combat. Mostly since we didn't get to give Fjorm any buffs. There is Here, but we should one be able future. to smite Lager and forward. What are you thinking? Which lets her move in and knock out Thracier. <laughs> before backing up a tile and out of the range of Saros. Yes. Then we'll let Fjorn jump in and finish Leaf off. Ah! And from here it's just a matter of dancing around Saros until we close out the match. Yes. We just want to pick up these ether pots first. Yes. And then we'll move forward. It will be done. We should be able to close things out from here. Here we'll just get in place for thinking? a nice big bonfire. Close your eyes. And let Lagern close out the match. Let's hatch a plan. Service so doesn't really have any friends here. That was a fun one. Let's see what we get next. This match is going to be a fun one near the end of the week. It's a rematch, and they've got a couple of pretty impressive units headlining their team, including a maxed out Fjorm. Attack Speed Bond's a very nice skill for her since it's flexible and can be used in both phases, and it makes her a bit more threatening to try and tank. And Deflect Missile can really help her survive any enemy lynches that happen to try to test the defense. They also have this maxed out Inns, who's also extremely threatening to try and tank, especially when enabled by a Harmonic Catria for triangle attacks. They've also got this Harmonic Leaf. We've seen a lot of him this week, and he's a bit annoying thanks to his miracle effect from his weapon, and this Lancebreaker is a neat bit of extra tech to help him handle any brave Hectors, or potentially legendary Dimitris, I guess. And then they've also got a Triangle Adept Raven Tomb Seagard in the back, along with a Mirabilis as their second dancer, and a Saros for their seventh slot. There are a lot of drive attacks here too, which can actually make it very tricky to secure a Heavy Blade check, especially on Catria or Fjorm. We actually ended up having to double check some things to make sure that we'd get a Heavy Blade on this Catria, but I think we should be able to. And this ruse on Seagird is a neat way to really double down on these rallies and make it a lot harder to tank any of this at all. I don't think we're going to end up 
tanking this, per se. Although we will end up tanking our way through about half of their team if I've figured this out correctly. But the bulk of this is going to be about picking the right targets and sniping a few key components before the enemy phase begins. Time to go. We're going to take advantage of our safety fence on this first turn by staying out of their threat range and just opening things up a little. We're just going to open up this front line of structures Where to, friend? and make sure that we let Plumerius Close sneak up here eyes. to break a Dark Shrine for us. And then we'll just say go. This team actually has a slightly sneaky threat range on the first turn. Actually, not. I'm not sure why I was reading ends as being able to reach this tile. It makes it a little easier to approach this, but not by much. From here, we're just going to flip Edelgard over towards Yuri to complete her spectrum of buffs, Understood. and then have her flip Yuri forward as well to chest this first trap, and make sure that they're both in range to swap Edelgard forward and test the second trap. Then, we're going to Dance Yuri, which debuffs Katria and also gives Edelgard a little bit more attack from Plumeria's weapon, which should be just enough to let her actually activate Heavy Blade here. Yep, and down goes Katria. And with Katria out of the way, Edelgard can march on in. March on ends. And then fi finish things off by one-shotting Leaf. From here, she should be able to tank Sigurd before enemy phasing her way through Mirabella's Fulham and Ceres. We'll just have Fury break this Panic Matter to avoid giving her any debuffs, and make sure that Mirabella's never gets to have her weapon online. And we'll move no Asher over time and say go. Seagirt attacks first, and the triangle adept lets him do some damage, but without a triangle attack to back it up, he's not as much of a threat. And Edelgard can actually just barely one-shot this maxed out Fjorm. It's fun to see. And well, Ceres can do one point of damage, but that's not going to be enough to let her survive this fight. And Mirabilis isn't going to do much better. any better at all. And down she goes. And from here it's a pretty straightforward matter of clearing out the ether pots before having Edelgard close out the match. It's a satisfying rematch. Let's see what we get next. This match should be a fun way to close out the week. They've got a bit of an armor stall ball here with the um, Fallen Edelgard and a pretty impressive Murr as most of their front line. Distant Foil's an interesting idea for her. I don't know that it helps too much for her, but it does still work really well with Near Save since it gives her more stats and some extra options if she's attacked by a dagger or archer. This Katria in the corner isn't really enabling too much for them, but she is getting covered by Fjorm, who's a very effective far safe unit to screen the team from ranged attackers. This position for Katria is a little awkward though since she's out of range of Mer, and can be attacked in melee, which is also out of range of Niffle, which opens up ranged attackers to a much easier fight against Fjorm. They've also got the bonus week Mirabilis here, who's actually plus 10 and nearly maxed out. It's quite impressive. And Aceros as their 7th unit. Or enabling their 7th slot. It's a neat team. I don't think I'm going to have too many problems with it. And we should actually be reenacting the Ice and Flame Tempest event by just having Lake Yarn and Fjorm end up duking it out. I'm 
going to start things off just by design. letting Naga flip Thor onto this bolt trap to see if it's real. It is. That's fine. I made sure that we kept Let's both Lagern and yes. Dimitri out of the way, since they're the only ones who should see combat here. Lagern's going to move all the way up here and test another trap and try to break a statue. I found both of the real ones. That's good. There is and then we'll have Asher break a fence. Why not? Dance her. Yes. And let her break another structure By before moving will. Thor over one space. I'll comply. And we'll let Dimitri move up here. From here, we should just be able to flip Lagern over Let's have and actually plan. have her knock out Fjorm through Ice Mirror. We are going to take a pretty solid counterattack here. Disgrace leaves a brand. But the bonfire is a little too much for Fjorm to tank. And we'll move Lagern down here. It will be done. Flip Ashra over. And Ashra is going there to open up this future. tactic room for us. Which should give Mirabilis a way out and make her a lot easier to snipe. Your orders without letting any of the rest of the melee out. Dimitri is going to break this. Close your eyes. And then we'll just dance like yarn. And since what we found the real bolt trap, she can just move on up here and take down Katria. There's huh. yep. a rally. And dance. Okay, so Mirabilis is going to stay put. I actually did end up messing up my opening here and forgot to plan to break this catapult. Without the healing, Lakeyarn yes. has a bit more Let's trouble plan. handling the Myrrh and the Fallen Adel Guard, but we should still be able to make this work with a little bit of creative maneuvering. I'm going to spend a turn just moving into position here. We'll move Lakeyarn down I'll this comply. way, flip Ashford downwards, oh, I'll then do Lakeyarn with Plumeria, and have her move out of yes. range of this bolt tower. And yes. then we'll have Naga flip Plumeria to the right, I seek a and foe. move Thor down here. And say go. Now from answer. here, we can smite Lagern forward and actually give her a set of buffs to work with for this turn. Naga's done. going to break this catapult for us, and then Lagern's going to move all the way in and snipe Mirabilis. I will burn my regrets. Actually gets quite a solid amount of damage reduction from Niffle, even if it's not enough to save her. Close your eyes. And Mary's going to dance like her. We should Let's be able to, to move over one space and break through Niffle, while also recharging Bonfire. <laughs> and then using Kanto to get out of range of Mur, while Thor removes Naga to safety. Yes. And Dmitri flips after a forward. And that leaves us out of range of their team for this turn, while also making sure they start moving. From yes. here, we're just going to start picking these pots up before we close the match out. What is your desire? They will submit. And we are going to need to let Dimitri handle this Adel card, since she's a little too annoying to break through the damage reduction when Lakeyarn already has 28 hit points remaining. Your orders. And that's fine. He shouldn't have any issues with this. Oh, I'll do it. And then we'll just dance Lake Yarn. Let's hatch a plan. And let her move down here. While Edelgard does get to survive a hit here and use her Gale Force, she doesn't actually keep that bonfire charged thanks to Atrocity which makes it very easy for Dimitri to finish her off here. Neither of the others can reach us, so... 
from here it should be pretty straightforward. Yes. We'll just have Ashura smite like your up. I'll comply. Move Dimitri out of the way. What are you thinking? And let Blakeyarn have some more fun in her bonus week by one shotting this Myrrh. By my flame. And then we'll dance her. Let's have and have her close up weak. Down goes Saros. That was a fun way to close out the week, and also a fun week overall. <laughs> it's always neat to see Dimitri and Edelgard going back and forth. I should actually be able to give Edelgard some more time in the spotlight next week, since there's actually a third bonus week for her. So, going back to her and Ash will be a lot of fun. I do have a Discord channel if you'd like to hang out and chat or get updates on the current video schedule. There's a link in the description, and there's also a Patreon page there if you'd like to help support the channel. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the video, good luck with your own matches, and I'll see you next time.